Hi, I'm in the garage uh, installing the uh, Zappy, My Energy Zappy electric car charger. There's my new uh, 32 amp outlet, 6 mil uh, copper, millimeter squared copper. I've uh, pulled an Ethernet uh, cable through for the, um, so I've got plenty of cores for the uh, current transformer. I'm only going to install one, but uh, I'll, um, I might install a second one later. I've installed the uh, plugs here. Um, they give you a nice handy little template here which comes with the cardboard box which is nice for screwing it on and uh, yeah look at the leaves everywhere um, it's pretty terrible it's windy today it's blowing in everything anyway so still on the cable gland this is for my um, six uh, my uh, 32 amp uh, cable there I'll install a smaller cable gland for the um, ethernet you've got to drill those they don't actually uh, come with it yeah, and there's my uh, cable. I'll just uh, cut that to length. It's already um, terminated in there. So cut it to length and uh, she'll be right. No wackers. It's a real pain in the ass pulling the uh, Ethernet cable through the roof, though. Probably should have gone for that wireless solution, but uh, she'll be better in the end, I think. There you go. That's some nice looking cable glands ready to go. And uh, so I'll just hook those up now. I haven't uh, hooked up the sensor to the other end yet, but... Uh, yeah, I'll feed that into one of the pairs of the Ethernet. It's got to be a twisted pair all the way, of course, um, to get rid of all your um, common mode noise. Well, there you go. That ain't coming off anytime soon, I can assure you. Um, the brickwork wasn't uh, exactly flat, so it did rock until I uh, screwed it in. Three uh, screws there, if you want. Uh, it does have a um, two center ones down here, if you want it, like if you have to install it on like a uh, beam or something like that then you can do that. Otherwise, uh, you install it three like that. So all I've got to do now is uh, cut that cable uh, to length. Just leave a bit of hang on there and um, terminate the uh, feed the Ethernet cable and uh, terminate that through and then attach my current sensor and Bob's your uncle. All right, let's fire it up uh, for the first time. I've checked my earth. I've double checked my uh, mains connections. So let's give it a bell. I haven't actually tested this uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, yet, so... <laughs> I assume it's fine, but let's switch it on. Here we go. Ta-da! Verifying firmware, my energy zappy. Do, 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 do. Someone said that's the uh, theme from Final Fantasy or something. But anyway, um, yeah, current transformer's not uh, hooked up yet, and it's not programmed, and the EV's disconnected. But yeah, didn't blow up. That's a start. Check this out. I just discovered that's actually got a knock sensor on it which um actually also works with this when you um you don't need an electrical connection in there like a micro switch or anything like that it just detects the uh physical thing on the um uh, on the case so that's that's very nice anyway um i better set it up first before i do charging i guess all right i've set up some basic stuff probably not uh complete but uh good enough for australia so i'm going to uh do my first charge it's got a five meter cable so let's go over here, let's plug her in and see if she detects. Yep, I heard it, uh, I heard the car do the lock, so it's locked. And I heard it over here, yeah, we've got green. Oh, charging, charging 5.5, 6.7 kilowatts. Oh, installation limit. Uh, okay, yeah, all right, I haven't set it up properly something's wrong <laughs> but you saw it it was charging um yeah all right how do we stop stop boost not available no nope. stopped <laughs> there we go uh, okay well did charge for a second anyway okay i upped my grid limit oh yep up my uh grid limit there 7.2 kilowatts i'm successfully charging at 7.2 kilowatts if i go inside there it is, uh, 7.2 kilowatts. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. It's still got to play around with the settings, though. But, yeah, it does work. <laughs> All right, the last step is to install the current clamp. you notice there's the arrow going that way. This is feeding into the house, so this is my grid feed here. So, there you go. I've got that connected. I spliced that into my um, Ethernet cable, which is a uh, 30, in fact, the whole run is 35 meters. So yeah, that's a long way, but let's see if it works. And sure enough, winner, winner, chicken dinner. There it is, 
three kilowatts is very it's jumping down it's very shady it like it just comes in and out at the moment so that is uh i, I like how the um the size of the arrow there seems to grow um based on the amount of power going out i think it look, look is it going to get bigger as the sun going to come out yeah yeah there we go yeah it's actually growing in size check it out that's pretty cool huh okay it's now saying surplus there so it's got all these different messages depending on um so we have surplus solar there oh and it just switched into charging mode rcd it just checks the rcd every time but there you go i just want to yeah what i want to do is check that no five kilowatts oh yeah so so there you go it just dropped so we're now import oh well, we're importing a little bit exporting it's going to jump around a little bit yeah, but it's basically charging at the lower rate. So I'm in the Eco++ Plus Plus mode now. So this will now change that charge rate depending upon um, how much excess solar. So as soon as the shade comes over, I'm not sure of the sample rate, you know, once a second or something like that. It seems to be, it'd be every update rate there. So yeah, once per second or something. It would, so it's shaded now. The, sun, uh, the shade just came over, so it's dropping. Yep. So it's working. That's Eco++ Plus Plus mode. So it's that's doing its job. So that PWM should be changing. So if I actually go in there, so if we go into readings there, uh, pilot PWM, there it is, twelve percent. Uh, Fifty. It's normally at fifty percent, but there you go. It's 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 dropping. Um, I I set a minimum of ten percent. So that's the minimum it's going to charge at. So it looks like it will actually draw from the grid as an absolute minimum if yeah because you can only go down to 10 percent. i don't know why that yeah look we're yeah we're importing a little bit from the grid so it looks like it's not absolutely perfect i don't think you can't absolutely guarantee that every electron is going to come excess from the solar i don't know why that minimum's there that minimum pwm but anyway um that's that's pretty cool so 1.2 kilowatts but unfortunately it's shaded 1.3 there you go so that's pretty close, and that will um, it's the shades just coming in and out. I guess it's, I guess perfect and annoying at the same time, um, for this test today. But there you go, that's the uh, there you go, two point seven, two point six. So there you go, it does it works with the the Zappy works with the Ionic in that it um it changes the PWM and the Ionic responds reads that PWM signal. It looks like in real time, like every second, samples at once per second, and then adjust the charging rate cool huh so there you go i'm very happy with that that worked an absolute treat works as advertised i yes i will install a second second current sensor to actually get the uh production value as well presumably that'll show up on the uh display there because i've installed that four pair ethernet uh cable and yeah it goes the full uh 20 it goes as i think yeah no 35 meters 35 meters of cable that that works uh, over no problems whatsoever but as i said you've got to use a twisted um pair for that and eco plus plus mode works as advertised but if i wanted to i can override that i can fast charge that is that going to update straight away or do we have to boost boost not available but there you go it's going now it's now going at the full seven kilowatts if you go oh bugger it <laughs> i really need to go out um you put in fast mode that's great that works a treat and you don't have to look at the uh, numbers by the way you can just look at the lead here and uh, when it's green like this that means all of the charging uh, power is coming from your solar um, and so if it goes orange it means that uh, it's coming you know it's doing both um, or something anyway you can read the manual uh, for that but yeah that's really cool and after you finished here it tells you what percentage was used with uh solar power there 62 percent because i was actually running the uh fast charger there for most of the a majority of the time there but um there you go very cool so at the moment in uh full sun you can see that there's zero uh to or from the grid which is exactly um what you want because all of the uh solar is going into the car minus what the um, house is using so yeah if i get another current clamp on there which is easy to add i'll be able to get that uh, uh figure coming from there but i can get that figure coming from my other monitoring uh, systems it's just not conveniently on the screen here but yeah 
that works well. It, 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 we're taking nothing from the grid and we're exporting nothing from the grid. All my excess solar at the moment is going into the car. And if that shade comes over, it'll drop. And, you know, you might see some fluctuations there as it, you know, one second sampling difference and stuff. Well, sampling difference and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's working well. Very impressed. And you get a total kilowatt hours there. That's going in. So we are going to see some uh, residual offset here just as uh, like the shade comes in and out. It takes X amount of time for the car to respond to the chain. Well, X amount of time for this to respond to the measurement, change the PWM, and then the car's got to uh, change its um, charge rate. Here we go. Yeah, 0.4 because the sun's just coming in and out. And um, yeah, so the car's got to respond. It's a whole, you know, very slow uh, loop on this thing. But um, yeah, like if the sun's just out and it's not coming in and out, in and out, in and out, then it does settle down very quickly to uh, zero um, in net import energy there. All right, I just completed a uh, couple of hours long uh, cycle purely on Eco Plus. So let's actually um, stop this now and see what I put in total of 8.19 kilowatt hours. It's supposed to tell us the percentage. Hang on, I'll unplug it. There we go. When you unplug it, you get, so they have it 97% um, eco, so from the sun. So it basically, it followed it almost perfectly, um, even when the shave was coming in and out. Of course, if you've got perfect sun with no shave, you'll probably get 99 or 100%. The fact that the shave came in and out, it actually uh, stopped and restarted charge a couple of times. Um, that, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's very, Impressive, so I like it. Check this out. This is really fascinating. This is the uh, live output from my solar analytics monitoring uh, system as I was charging. And uh, the yellow uh, curve here is the solar uh, produced total from both of my um, independent systems. And the purple one is uh, the consumption of both the EV and uh, the house as well. And you can see how perfectly it matches like this. It's absolutely amazing. It, it only deviates incredibly slightly for like brief periods here, as I said, as part of like the loop of like the car has to respond and then the zappy has to respond and uh, so forth. But that's absolutely incredible until it got to about uh, 1.2 two kilowatts or thereabouts, um, I think around about five amps or something like that, which equates to about five amps at uh, 240 uh, volts, something like that. And then you can see that the car actually stopped charging. It won't go under that. Uh, the car will actually switch off uh, charging, but the solar, of course, continues to actually uh, produce there. And you can see that I've uh, actually captured it again, extending that. You can see how the uh, purple one here, this is the base consumption of the house. So the car's actually drawing uh, nothing there so the house was drawing a few hundred watts or something like that just the fridges and whatnot um, and then once it reached like about 1.2 kilowatts or so again something around that area anyway then it starts the car automatically starts charging back up again and it matches it perfectly it's brilliant. So, and uh, the Zappy um, during this period was showing uh, waiting for uh, supply or whatever. So it wasn't, it didn't have enough uh, supply to uh, turn on the car. But yeah, that's great. So there you go. I'm very happy with that install. Um, that was pretty easy and uh, it works fantastically. And um, I have had it on for a little bit uh, before and I couldn't feel any of the six millimeter uh, cables warming up. Or anything like that but I will do another video where I get my thermal camera go in the roof and check out the uh, six square millimeter um, copper here at the full uh, charge rate but yeah very happy catch you next time